Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tokyung Kim, uh, currently working with the Department of the Naval Architecture and Ocean Engineering at Seoul National University. Today, I'm going to introduce about my uh, research group, Ocean and Shore Technology, and we call the OST, but it doesn't mean that the original soundtrack it might be better for you to remember. So at the same time, we'd like to motivate all of you guys like talented young researchers. So let's get it started. So this is overview of my presentation and the five minutes at the introduction of the OST, uh, followed by the existing and the future research work about five minutes and we are gonna have a five minutes Q&A session, that's all. And uh, uh, we OST, we established uh, in 2015 when I was working in uh, Malaysia uh, with the Petronas University of Technology and uh, you can see the, all the members at that time and after that I moved to the Newcastle University in uh, 2019 and recently I moved again to the Seoul National University. So this is our you know uh, research group OST and uh, Ocean and shore technology, especially here, shore represent the onshore, offshore, and the near shore. Uh, we have prepared a variety of the specific and the realistic problems and the pro programs to provide the practical values for the future talented researchers like you guys. So we provide the researchers with excellent environments, humans, and networks and services and opportunities to produce the future leaders. So this is our vision and missions. So we'd like to become a world-class research uh, group and we want to provide the creative ideas and um, uh, develop the knowledge and to contribute to in industry and the social advancement for young talented researchers and missions to develop and expand innovative research capabilities and the provided young talented researchers. At the same time, we'd like to collaborate with the other top level research institutes. So this is the main slide and actually it looks quite complicated, but what we are doing is you can see here the right hand side, top right, uh, you can see the damage structures like the explosion, fire, grounding, some of the vessels are broken into two pieces. So we, what we are doing is non-linear structure mechanics based uh, structure condition assessment. So limit uh, state design, for example, the ultimate strength and fatigue limit, accident, something like that, and condition assessment of the aged structures. Of course, as time goes by, our structure or the, our human body will be aged and the buckling and the uptake conditions, LNG. Nowadays, we are talking about the renewable or the hydrogen energy like that and accidental damage assessment. So this is our human body, uh, all the photos in this slide captured by the Kusori and the human bodies and our structures are quite similar. What I'm talking about is uh, when we construct our vessel that is like the as-built condition to newborn baby. And as time goes by, of course, we need to, uh, we need some kind of uh, inspection like the X-ray or something like that. And after that, once we detect that something goes wrong, then we need to take action. So after condition assessment, like the medication, operation, maintenance, repairing, like that. So what we are doing is actually summarize here. So this is our collaborators. I was working with the Newcastle University and the Patronas, UCL, and the MPNU, and the Tsinghua, something like that. So existing and future work, this might be interesting. So visualized research, and of course, uh, this is also captured by the Kusori, but I was also the member of Kusori at that time. So uh, I was working on the age related, like the corrosion, fatigue, cracking, denting. And once we you know, construct the vessel, uh, of course, there should be initial imperfections. And during the operation, we need to consider the abnormal wave, environmental conditions, dynamic pressures, sometimes the low temperature issues, cryogenic, ultra high pressure, or this uh, accidental condition is the fire and explosion. Actually, those two are the one set and impact load, like collision, grounding, and drop object. 
And recently our growth uh, slightly shifted to this way, uh, but you can see here, uh, don't want to explain all the details like the IoT, IOE, but what we know is the data connection is truly important and it's like the clouding system. So once we gather the, all the data, it, the shape will be like the big data. So once it goes heavier, then we need to do some kind of processing, we call it data processing. So conventionally, we also did it like a conventional method is available, but at the same time, nowadays, we are always talking about the artificial intelligence, uh, reinforced learning, machine learning, deep learning, ANN, DNN, like that. But what we are doing here is, the purpose is actually the data optimization. And for what? Engineering. So basically, uh, we try to gather some, the, um, some data uh, using the finite element method or the sensor, and the data processing might be utilized by the conventional or the AI techniques. And at the end, we want to apply all the things, optimized data set for our engineering design and manufacturing. So that is the thing. And this is the example you can see here, pipe alpha or the deep water horizon accident almost 11 years ago by the BP. And the top right, you can see the offshore oil and gas uh, production systems. And we have to install the blast wall to protect our human life. So this is the FVM, the modeling. And after that, uh, you can see here, this is the actual testing. You can see it is huge amount of the blast load applied to the structures. So how are we gonna protect our structure? Uh, that is one of the way is install the blast wall. So we try to you know, model the sandwich panel system, we call the SBS and uh, the core, the shape is like the hexagonal. So we try to do some kind of Mm. Uh, the data processing as well as we model the 450 uh, finite element models and after that we this is some kind of examples and uh, we did uh, data processing we could be able to provide the design formulations or oh, here this vessel is broken into two and basically uh, this can also be modeled by the FEM and uh, it should be subjected to the vertical bending moment and that side will be compressed or tensioned continuously. And this deck is combination of the plate and the stiffness. So this is uh, the, the <clears throat> final element analysis result after we apply the progressive collapse load. And um, you can see here the buckle or the ultimate limit state. And this is the stress strain curve we call the uh, load shortening curve. And uh, after that, we you know, conducted data processing and our group could be able to provide the design formulations, we call the empirical formulations like that. But here, important thing is not what, what, what is not important or the how is not important, but the most important thing is why or the question mark, why we need to do this. We want to provide the you know, easy and clear uh, design formulations, the design solutions for our customers. So here, this is the outcome. You can see we developed our own data processing techniques. We compared, and uh, you can see the you know, accuracy here. This is the example. And the last one is the, the application of the artificial neural network to the riser structures top right here. And this is the you know, data processing technique, the procedure. I can't explain all the details within this time frame, but uh, data generations and uh, training is important and data processing by the Octave or the uh, Python, whatever it is, is uh, we can do that. And after that, we need to compare those two sets. So this is simple ANN training examples for the riser structures and we compare the you know, outcomes, it was not that much bad. And we tried to put more input like 20,000 cases of the riser structures. And you can see here the, the software result and the, our ANN result is not bad, isn't it? So that's all for me today. And thank you very much for your kind attention. If you are interested or you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me here by email address. So thank you very much.